everybody. Gosh, I was trying to think. It's been a little bit since we've been together or I've been with you. We've had a lot of you know, combined worships. We say goodbye to Jim, and we had our youth mission trip Sunday, and, and there's just been a lot of things going on. But here we are, and Todd's here, and Spencer, and it's great to be here together. And boy, have we been having one doozy of a summer. Um, I know there have been lots of good things going on in people's lives, but shoot, around the world, starting off with, it's already been over a month since the Pulse nightclub shooting, that was June 12th, we know 49 people were killed there, and then we had police officers killing black people in circumstances that looked like deadly force was not warranted, and then the nightmare of the five officers killed in Dallas, and then Baton Rouge, and then Nice, and Istanbul, and it's this onslaught and, and I think the, the thing that sometimes scares me a little bit about it is that the pain is fresh and it hurts, but then pretty quickly we're moving on because we've got to keep living our lives and, and we want to stay compassionate, to stay concerned and not just forget, but yet we have to live our lives. And then there's this thing that happens where we can become intensely focused on each heartbreaking thing. And so that's what we're going to focus on a little bit today, is how do we live this life as Christians with all of these things happening? What is it that we are to do? So will you pray with me? Loving God, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts and minds be pleasing to you, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. As I was thinking about all this, I was thinking the way that I get news. We don't get a paper newspaper anymore, haven't for a long time, but don't miss anything because between Facebook and things you hear everywhere, there's plenty, at least in my experience, there's plenty of stuff coming at me all the time. And I got to think it's kind of like dogs that either the media grabs us because they want us to read this stuff. They want us to click and read it. And they grab us like bad, naughty dogs and take us over to the horrifying thing. Smell it, smell it, you know. And, and we're like, ah, oh, okay, okay. And, uh, and that's, we don't really want to do that. You no, know, you don't want to smell it, but we do. Or we're the kind of dogs that there's the vile mess and they're like, vile mess, that's for me. And they roll and roll in the mess. Do you all know those, those dogs? They have the roll and ooh, it's, it's, it's wonderful. So I don't want to be either one. I don't want to be dragged by my, you know, scruff of my neck over to smell it. I, I don't want that. And I also don't want to be the kind that rolls in it. So we've got to figure out how do we get control of all of this ourselves? Because we want to be aware. We're not going to be, well, you can't be a Christian in this world and be like, just don't show me, I'm not, I'm not going to see it at all. We want to know, and we want to feel compassion, and we want to have our hearts opened and know when it's ours to respond. But what can happen is when we focus on these things too much, and that's what media is doing these days, it is all these things are awful everywhere. If we focus too much, one of the truest things that I can say to you is that what you focus on increases. That's the nature of the way our minds work and the way our thoughts work. So if you focus on the horror, and goodness knows there's plenty, all of a sudden you start seeing more and you notice more and it becomes a darker, more horrible world. There are some older people that I know that have been watching one particular news station. Uh, Y'all can use your imaginations about which one I might be talking about. But there's one news station that 24-7, it's fear, it's be afraid, hateful things, uh, and, and they have become really scared. So if you focus on things that are scary, you will notice there's more to be scared of. And so we have this call to follow Jesus Christ and be the light, not the darkness. But what that requires is that we focus on the light and not the darkness. And I, I heard a sermon that Nadia Bowles-Weber did just recently. She's a pastor in Denver, Colorado, and she's awesome. I commend any of her stuff to you. Um, but she just did a sermon called, a sermon on why it is called the parable of the merciful Samaritan 
and not the parable of the robbers. Think about it. It's not called the parable of the robbers. The robbers attacked a person viciously and left that person on the side of the road to die. That happened. It happens in the parable. And then there were idiots that walked by and didn't pay any attention. Jesus was calling out hypocrisy in the religious leaders of the day. Just walked by because they had better things to do. So, yes, there were idiots. And yes, there was evil. But the greatest bandwidth in that parable isn't on the evil and it isn't on the idiots. It's on the Samaritan who stops and helps. Mr. Rogers picked up that idea. Some of you guys have seen the quote from Mr. Rogers way back where he said, when something horrible happens, focus on the helpers. Look for the helpers. Well, that's what Jesus was saying to do in the parable of the Good Samaritan. Let's, let's put our attention on where the light shows up. And then that's more inspiring for us to be the light. But on, just on Facebook, oh my goodness, Thing after thing, the mom who sold her daughter to her drug dealer to pay for drugs. That was a real highlight of this past week. And y'all, I fell for it. I had this like, no, and I click on it and just like, oh. And, and, and I, I said this once before, I should know this by now. If the headline is a nightmare of horror, do not click on that because it will be a nightmare of horror right? And, and you don't need that. You can't help that. You can do a quick prayer over that situation. But there's, there's a lot of dark, and it's coming at you. It's coming at you as you scroll through your feed. And we have to be a little bit more disciplined about all of that, because we have to be the light. We have to focus on kindness and generosity and helpers, even in the face of the dark. Now, in nature, when a light comes on in the darkness, like a flashlight. Is that, is that flashing? Is there a light? <laughs> when, they, when they actually work, um, if, if you're like at a lake, if you're camping at the lake, you can see somebody's flashlight come on across the lake. It will draw all eyes because that's the way light actually works in the darkness. Have you guys ever been in a cave and done that thing where they turn off all the lights? That's such an interesting, that's, it's horrifying actually. I get so scared because I think the light will never, and for a second I'm thinking we're all dead now. Um, and and you, can't, you can't see it's so dark. And then the, the guide will turn on the light and everything's illuminated. That's how light actually works. But we, when we're thinking about the more metaphorical sense of the darkness with all of the dark of this world and the light of all of the people helping, we don't see it that way. We don't realize that the light is that strong. We can't find the light a lot of times. So we have to be intentional about looking for it. That's not to say don't feel compassion for what is horrible in this world. God will lead you, not like a bad owner to make you smell it, I promise, but more in the sense of led with your own broken heart. God will lead you to the places where there's pain, where you can be a blessing, whether it's through your prayers or your actions. Let yourselves be compassionate people in this world, but look for the good. So you remember, uh, I'm sure many of you, the Pulse nightclub shooting. I was so moved to see the line of people waiting in that hot Florida sun. The line was like miles long, to go give blood. There was one person who took a gun into that nightclub, but there were thousands of people who were there to roll up their sleeve and give blood to help. And there are so many more that were praying around the world. Good outnumbers bad. I promise you that. It just doesn't seem like it because it seems like this threat of fear and darkness is all around us and it's closing in. But a lot of that is because we are focused on it. What you focus on increases. We are focused on the things that will scare us. Just like last week in the Republican convention, I'm not about to get political, it's not about that. I'm just noticing that in a lot of the speeches over and over and over again, it was fear, it was these people are coming to get us. This is scary. Our cities are breaking down. There was so much fear. But I'll tell you, 
Fear is a powerful motivator. If you want to control somebody and you want them to get them to do just about anything, you make them scared. Time honored in human history. When people are scared, they'll give away their freedoms. When people are scared, they'll do whatever it takes to make sure their families and themselves are safe. That's the way it works. So all through, all through scripture, you guys know, we've talked about it before. The angels don't get many opportunities to talk to us. They're guiding us, they're protecting us. I believe that. I believe there are angels around. I don't necessarily know what that means, really, in the whole mystery of God, but there is this presence. But they don't get to talk to us much. So every time in Scripture one shows up, the most important thing they want to say, the very first thing before they tell their message or anything else, what do they say? Don't be afraid. Fear not. And partly because they are probably terrifying in themselves. You'd be like, ah, what is that? But also because if you had one message that you wanted to tell humankind, the one thing that could cut through all the baloney of the way in which we get confused about what matters and confused about light and dark, I think it would be, do not be afraid. I've only got this much time to talk to you, so all I can say to you right now is, don't be afraid. That's the whole thing of Jesus. That's the whole gospel. He came into this world to be the light and to show us the light. And then he died because death is the scariest thing. But he conquered death. Death was like nothing. There's resurrection. There's this resurrection hope. That's the way light works. Light conquers the darkness. But again, we have to focus on the right stuff. So those blood donors out at Pulse Nightclub. But I'm going to take a step aside this enough series was meant to be about jen hatmaker's wonderful bible study called enough where she got rid of a whole lot of things each month she would eliminate stuff the first month is food clothing possessions stress there are these things and it's powerful and so each week we were going to move through this but i realized we can still do that but this summer it feels like the bigger meaning of enough it's like enough of this pain, enough of this darkness. And for today, enough of fear, enough of our fear. Glennon Doyle Melton this week said, fear is not the boss of us. Love is the boss of us. But we have to keep turning back. So I knew I needed to do something to help get me refocused, to set the reset button. And part of what Jen Hatmaker recommends is a fast. In fact, all of her seven things are fasting in different ways, but the first week is fasting food. I've occasionally given up stuff for Lent, you know, like food for Lent. Other times I've given up other things, but fasting has never been a big spiritual discipline for me. I, you know, I hate the idea of, of that hungry feeling, that buzzy headache. I've, I've not taken it seriously, but I was really moved going to a Ramadan dinner at the mosque, like a lot of us went, they fast from sunup to sundown, which is a long time in the summer. No water, no food. They take it very seriously. And scripture takes it seriously. Scripture assumes we're going to fast. Fast from food. It assumes it. When you fast, do this. That doesn't, that doesn't say, so long as you're not someone with a problem with low blood sugar and, and you know, on and on, you know, all the things, then maybe you could consider. It doesn't say it says when you fast this. So I realize, you know, I need to probably get a little bit more serious about that. So this past week, Steve and I both actually have, for different reasons probably, but have given up, not everything, I haven't done the full deal, but I've given up dairy, bread, alcohol, and sugar, which is like my entire diet, that's all. <laughs> and so, um, it's actually, it's actually hard <laughs> to figure out what to eat that doesn't have um, dairy or bread in it in particular. Um, but I wanted to because in Jen Hatmaker's case, she eliminated everything but seven foods. She just let herself for a month eat seven foods. Other people might just let one meal go. There are different ways you could fast with food. Wesley did a particular fast. I'll tell you about that if you want to know about it. But I just eliminated all those things and I wanted to eat smaller portions. So all this week, I've tried every time I'm hungry, like right now, y'all, I'm hungry. But every time I would, I would feel that feeling of grab for that donut or whatever, 
I would stop and kind of think about why I was doing it. And why I'm doing it is for two of the reasons that Scripture talks about. There are six reasons Scripture says to fast. Could you put that screen up? Enough. There they are. In Scripture, fasting is called for when you are in mourning, in inquiry. You're wondering, what decision should I make? Which road should I take? Where am I going next? Repentance. Preparation. What's the next thing? I've got to get ready for this that I know God has set in front of me, but I need to get ready so that I can move into it. Crisis. Or worship. Your fasting can be an act of worship because you do it for God. Well, I realized that I'm in mourning, and I also feel like God's preparing me for something. So two of those really applied for me. I wanted to be able to mourn the people at Pulse Nightclub, the black men who were shot, the officers who were killed, niece, all of the things, all of the things. I wanted to mourn them with my whole soul. And I also wanted to acknowledge God preparing me by doing something that would really reset me. So I encourage you guys, consider it. Consider fasting in whatever form that may look like for you, but do it because when you notice yourself going to grab the coffee, going to grab whatever it is, think about, you know what, I'm doing this to be closer to God, and let that gird you up. It's just something to experiment with. It's not like 40 days of Lent. This is just this one week to consider it. And as you do that, look for light. Look around you. I saw it yesterday. I had mentioned in announcements. This church came together like a village for this memorial service. So many people giving in every way they could, coming together, making everything work. That was light. That was God at work. I've seen it in kindnesses. This past week, one of our older people in the congregation, Reuben Berry, was put on hospice, and he died yesterday. Reuben was older. He had been battling Alzheimer's for 20 years, but he and his wife, Alice, had 67 years of marriage. So when I got to go pray with him and be with him at Silverado Memory Care on Brian Irvin, it was this beautiful, joyful thing because it was right. He's going on to his reward, and it felt right and that's the way life should be. That was light, getting to be with him. But the other thing that was light in that situation, y'all, Silverado, memory care. It is like the Shangri-La of memory care places. I've been in a lot of those places. And you walk in, and there's dogs and cats walking around, and people are petting them, and folks are happy. And you go into this big courtyard in the middle, and there's a little putting green. I walked by. There was this group of people. Now, remember, these are folks that all have dementia and Alzheimer's. They were all sitting with this sweet attendant, listening to Johnny Cash and decorating cupcakes. I thought, well, that looks good to me. I might like to join them on that. And, and we go in, and folks were just happy. They were happy. They were free to move as they wanted to. They were enjoying things. There was music, and there were attendants that were loving. I thought, man, this is beautiful. And it was beautiful. It was a sign of light in this world. But I also looked on the media because, boy, you have to be intentional. If you want to see the horrible nightmare story of degradation and abuse, that's easy, right? I mean, it's all over. It's a little trickier to find the signs of light, so you have to go searching. So I found three I want to show you. The first one is a little girl in California who decided that she wanted to share love and spread it. Let's watch. Okay. So often, when stopped by a stranger, Tell you about my program. we don't pause to hear what they have to say. Just a few seconds out of your day. Even if they're bright, well-spoken, okay. and cute kind. as a button. People. All you have to do is be kind. But rejection doesn't stop Leah Nelson for a second. All you have to do is be nice to someone. That's it? That's all I have to do? And those who do take time to listen to her. I love that. Uh-huh. Thank you so much. Yeah. Find she's not selling anything. I like it. Instead, she's giving away something priceless. Oh my God, dude, you are awesome. You Thank are. Thank you. Thank you so much, dude. This is a simple program born of the ten-year-old's love for making loom bracelets and a desire to create more harmony in the world. It starts with a good deed oh. done for someone else. It can be from shooting them out a compliment, buying this coffee at Starbucks. Don't 
be a bucket dipper, don't bully people, just all you have to do is be nice. What's a bucket dipper? It's when you're mean to someone. Rock your bracelets for me, I try to make them all cool colors. All right, thank you so much. Though the bracelets are pretty, you shouldn't get too attached. We've seen many people wearing them proudly, but the idea is to pass it along to the next person just as soon as you do something nice for them, asking them to pass it forward in turn. You share the message, there are many issues in the world, but let's just be nice to one another. Okay. I just want the world to be a better place. I mean, there's many issues and people are mad about the issues. Well, if you're mad about the issues, then why don't you take action to try to change them? After hearing Leah's story, some are congratulating her family slash support staff slash backup bracelet makers. One woman chose to tell other shoppers to make sure not to pass Leah by. Young woman out there, she's going way beyond. This is our hope for our future. Go and talk to her. So if you happen to be around town, and see a person with one of these. Give them a minute of your time. Who knows what a few seconds today could mean for tomorrow. Let's fix the future. In West Sacramento, Carmen Dickerson, Fox 40 News. But not only that, there is a little boy in Virginia. Let's watch this one. Oh man, water and Gatorade. Thank God, thank you. On a hot day, this man delivers the mail. And a little boy says thank you with a delivery of cold drinks to cool off with. Henry Bailey has been a postal worker in the Virginia area for 20 years. He inspires eight-year-old Carmine McDaniel so much, he even dressed up as a mailman for Halloween and then got a tour of the post office. So on the hottest day of the year, with temps reaching triple digits, Carmine thought it would be nice to treat the man who delivers important papers to their home with a cold one. Oh my God, yes. This gets our stamp of approval. For InsideEdition.com, I'm Lee Sheps. It doesn't have to be huge, it just has to be from the heart. And so a little moment outside the RNC. Signs of light. And like I said, in nature, when the light comes on in the darkness, it draws all the attention. But in our lives, it can be hard to see it. The darkness feels like it gets the last word. So for us to believe the truth that the light overcomes, we do have to go out and look for it. Keep our minds focused on the light, even as our hearts are broken, even as we know, keep focused. So as we move into communion in just a second, after you receive communion, what I really want for you to do is to go to this table. In the center of the papers, I've written some of the really dark things that we have all had to bear this summer. But I want you to take a pen, they're in little buckets, and write some sign of light from the smallest thing to the biggest thing, some sign of light that you have seen, someone that was kind, someone that was generous, your own act of kindness, um, something in the world that, that touched you. Let's share them and let's surround the darkness with the light because the truth is the light will overcome the darkness. The darkness will not overcome, but let's remind ourselves as a community that the light is bigger and that's really the whole story of Jesus summed up. He was the light. And the world tried to put out his light, but the darkness did not win. The light won. Resurrection. The triumph of the light. And that's where our minds must be because we are resurrection people. Will you pray with me? Loving God, newspapers tell us that if it bleeds, it leads. So we are inundated with the dark and the pain. And sometimes it is hard to see our way through. Shine your light in us. Help us see that good prevails even now. 
and then help us to be the light. You showed us how. You were that first light for us, Jesus Christ. And he has given his light to generation after generation. And now it is our turn. So help us to keep spreading it, God. We love you and we pray these things in the name of your son, Jesus, who taught us to pray. And I'd invite you to say with me, our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen.